This episode of Monster Memories is brought to you by Fangoria Magazine. Not only are they the greatest horror magazine and going strong since 1979, but they also have a fantastic website with even more articles, fun and informative podcasts, and awesome merch. For 20% off magazine and merch orders, use the promo code DEADNOISEBLOG at checkout when you visit shop.fangoria.com. When you hear the term slasher, what's the first movie that comes to mind? Personally, I'm a big Scream fan, so that's my go-to, but others might say something like Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th. But on a day like today, there's only one appropriate choice, and that's Halloween. Obviously. Was it the first slasher movie ever made? A lot of people like to say it is, but that's not really true. There were a few that came before it, like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho from 1960, Peeping Tom, and even Black Christmas. But it might be fair to say Halloween could be the beginning of the modern slasher film. It's impressive in a way that this movie's become as iconic as it is today. It didn't have the backing of a major studio and it was only made for around $300,000, half of which was spent on cameras, but through select drive-in screenings in its initial release and widespread word of mouth, it managed to gross over $47 million at the box office, making it one of the most successful independent movies ever made. It was praised for its production value which separated itself from the stigma of independent films looking inferior to typical studio releases. John Carpenter's score was also applauded, and for good reason because it really works in this movie. It's a little stripped back in comparison to other popular compositions with a large majority of it being performed on just the piano, but it's so effective that it doesn't even matter how complex or simple it is. Visually, Halloween looks great, especially when you consider the time it was made. Having been shot in widescreen, it looks much better than other independent films at the time, which goes to show what can happen when you put half your budget in the cameras. You would think the filmmakers intentionally made the night scenes insanely dark to build suspense or something like that, but the truth is they just couldn't afford lights. And thankfully it worked for the overall film because John Carpenter and Deborah Hill were making a horror movie, but if this was meant to be a romantic comedy or something, they would have been screwed. It's fun to imagine how much Halloween scared audiences at the time it was released when today's standards are taken into consideration. For starters, it's not as bloody as most people remember it to be or might expect it to be, and Michael Myers doesn't have some insanely high body count here either, and he's also not seen in the film for very long. Out of 91 minutes, Michael Myers is only in 9 of them. That might be hard to believe, but it's because his presence is felt throughout the entire movie, therefore having the audience on the edge of their seats waiting for him to appear. And even though it's just a guy with a butcher knife wearing a mechanic suit and a white Captain Kirk mask with messed up hair, there's just something unsettling about the character when you combine the appearance with the backstory. And Nick Castle does an unnaturally good job of playing a cold-hearted, blank-eyed, unstoppable killer. Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode was perfect casting also. Even though she doesn't care about the horror genre, she owes a lot of her success to it, with Halloween being her feature film debut, along with her work in films like The Fog and Prom Night earning her the title of Scream Queen. Laurie Strode is also a great example of the final girl character trope of slasher movies. Was she the first? Again, no, that title belongs to Sally from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974, but like I said, Halloween was a lot of people's first exposure to slasher films, so it's easy to consider Laurie Strode to be the first final girl, especially given the performance as memorable as Jamie Lee Curtis's. But let's be real, the best part of Halloween isn't Laurie Strode, and it's not even Michael Myers. It's Dr. Loomis. I mean, it's not even a competition. Donald Pleasance gives such a phenomenal performance as the paranoically neurotic psychiatrist that tries to warn the city of Haddonfield about the return of Michael Myers. He goes on these long-winded tangents about how evil Michael Myers is, and the only comparison I can think of that can compete with it is Quint's USS Indianapolis speech from Jaws. The longer the movie goes on, the crazier he gets, and what makes it even better is that it gets even worse with each sequel he's in. 
Yeah, surprise, surprise, they made a sequel to Halloween. I mean, when the first movie was as successful as it was, it only makes sense, I guess. But unfortunately, the franchise falls into the all too common category of progressively getting more and more ludicrous with each film. While some of the sequels have developed a cult following over the years, there's still nothing that can top the atmosphere and overall feeling of impending terror upon the small town that the first film was able to create. Halloween wasn't my first slasher film, but I saw it early enough for it to make some sort of impression on me. It was a similar feeling to when I first saw Dracula and Nosferatu, as if I was watching something that was the first of its kind. Granted, I was only around 13 or 14 and I hadn't seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Black Christmas yet, but nonetheless, Halloween is a great initial exposure to slasher movies. It's not insanely graphic, doesn't have a ton of nudity, it's not crazy scary by today's standards, and it's just a good introduction for people wanting to get into these kinds of movies, as well as the perfect movie for this time of year. But don't just take it from me. If you want to learn more about Halloween, I highly recommend reading the book Taking Shape, Developing Halloween from Script to Scream, which goes over the whole entire series. And you also need to check out Sinjin Chapman's video about the first film. I might disagree with him about it being the best horror movie ever made, but that's a different conversation for a different video. For now, that's all I have for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let me know what your first slasher movie was in the comments. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DeadNoiseBlog for more talk about horror movies and rock music. And until the next video, stay tuned, stay scared, and I'll talk to you later.